So Jay, why don't we jump into answering some questions? Is it common for cannabis to stifle a sex drive? Usually folks typically have the opposite experience of that, where it's able to really aid and increase in arousal and libido. When we talk about what's common, we also have to really keep in mind that all of our experiences are going to be really highly personalized. While it's not necessarily what's typical, you might experience it depending on what kind of cannabis you're using, or again, just to bring up that dosing as well. It's really important that you're honing in on that sweet spot for yourself and that you're finding the products that work well for you. So that that way cannabis can work in a way that is more typical and can help increase your arousal and your your sex drive instead. When you get past that therapeutic dosing level and you get in that uncomfort zone, that's where it can cause you to relax, go to sleep, do things like that, which I think that's where uh, you gotta be very careful. So really understanding your therapeutic dosing level is key. What is a good choice for intimacy, both CBD and THC, that I can also drive properly after a date? That's a great question. I like that the person who asked this question mentioned both CBD and THC. CBD and THC work really, really well together, even if you're having mostly one compared to just a little bit of the other. Coupled together, they can kind of boost the effects of either of them independently. And so it is nice to be mindful of choosing products that at least have a little bit of CBD in it, or if you're using mostly CBD, have a little bit of THC in it. And then I also thought it was, it was really mindful and responsible to ask about driving properly. And that again, is just going to be based off of the effect time of the particular route of administration that you're using. So you're going to want to make sure that you've waited out your high completely before you start driving. Never encourage anybody to drive under the influence of cannabis, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's what's within your normal tolerance level or what your typical doses are. And so, you know, if if you're looking for like an easy out and you want to be able to drive quickly, maybe using a vapes or flower will be better so that that way you can have more assurance that um, you'll kind of float back down to your, your sober state more quickly. Um, but really just being mindful of that effect time, you know, edibles, oral products, those are going to stay in your body system for like up to six hours. So if you're looking to drive within that time frame, maybe those aren't the best types. So this is where your topicals come into play. And also this is where your inhalation products come into play. will help quite a bit. Uh, don't grab a couple of squares of chocolate and, um, drive four hours later because that's about the time they're kicking in. What would be the best brand strain terpene to pull me out of my shell? And will they induce paranoia, anxiety after use? And I think this goes back to making sure you have the right terpene profile. That's what will really help you. And I think to pull you out of your shell, it's going to be very personalized. I don't know, you know, what pulls you out of your shell. I would say probably uh, an indica would help quite a bit. It also kind of depends on like what what helps you feel more comfortable. For some people, that, that's a little bit of a boost in energy. For other people, it's a lot of relaxation. Limonene kind of helps with both of those things, kind of gives you an elevated mood and also helps with stress relief. So maybe something that's limonene dominant might help the best. And again, making sure that you kind of avoid any kind of paranoia or anxiety, again, just really comes down to dosing more than what terpene profile you have just making sure you're staying within that dosing limit for yourself that works best for you but yeah this really also I think is where the benefit of keeping a cannabis journal is really helpful because then you can keep in mind what terpenes and what strains might have helped pull you out of your shell versus which ones might have made you a little bit more anxious. Are certain strains aphrodisiac? I don't think cannabis as much is an aphrodisiac as it is stimulant. This is where some of our edible products too might be kind of helpful. Like this is why our dark chocolate is such a good recommendation because you know, some studies show that that kind of has like aphrodisiac like qualities to it. But in terms of it's like when I think of of what folks really mean when they're asking if certain strains are aphrodisiacs, that kind of to me reflects like you you want to have that increased arousal, you want to have increased desire. And so I I think again, just looking back at that terpene profile, 
and really making sure that you're using things like like limonene or myrcene those can be really helpful i had sex in the past while high and sometimes i felt amazing and other times it felt normal what terpenes aid this i think this is the where those five terpenes six terpenes that you mentioned come into play and especially paying attention to myrcene beta caryophyllin and limonene come i also i really I know that I've said this so many times, but, but if you have certain experiences where cannabis helped you during intimacy and other experiences where it didn't, keeping a journal is going to be really, really helpful because then you can know specifically what helped give you the effects you were looking for versus what maybe just didn't help in the ways that you expected it to. When I take a hit from my sooth pen, it makes me want to have sex. Why? I would say the guilty party is the uh, terpene profile. Your thoughts, uh, Jay? I want it to be on the record that my suggestion for Soothe was before I saw these pre-submitted questions. So I feel like <laughs> that just helps even more with, with the validity of that. Okay, I feel like I was spot on. But again, everything that I mentioned while I was making that recommendation it helping just relax your body can be really helpful if you experience pain during sex mm -hmm. it having a terpene profile that can really aid in desire and arousal is going to be really helpful in making this product work really really well and if it if it works now you know you have a product that works really well for you if you want to have something to introduce into your cannabis and intimacy journeys you have a really good starting point which is really hopeful and exciting one other question that comes up is, how far in advance before intimacy should I use marijuana? I think the question really boils down to what we talked about earlier with the routes of administration. I mean, if you're going to look at taking the route of administration of inhalation, it works almost immediately. If you're going to look at using edibles like gummies, chocolate, lozenges, something like that. You're going to give yourself at least an hour. Uh, topicals, again, work right away. It just depends on the route of administration you're using. If you have, you know, a date planned, and it's like you're, you're getting ready and you're you're like listening to your music and you're getting your your best clothes on maybe that would be a good time to take an edible when you have like a few more hours before you're really going to embark on this or if you're looking for something more immediate that can be inhalation whether it's vape or flower or even those topical products so it really just depends on what that intimacy is going to look like and then what your route of administration is going to be. Are there any studies that link certain strains of cannabis to heightened sensuality or sexual desire? There's a couple of studies that are out there. If you go to PubMed, which is the United States government's library of scientific studies that have been out there, put in sex and cannabis and it'll pull up all those studies. What strains work best for getting aroused? So again, there's like so many different strains that might work best for different people. But I think with arousal, you're really looking for something that's going to aid in that vasocongestion, which is really just any type of cannabis. It's like almost all of it works as a vasodilator, which is going to basically encourage your body to go through the same things, the same sensations that it would be during the arousal stage of your sexual response cycle. Really anything with those terpenes that we've mentioned, the linalool, the limonene, myrcene, beta caryophylline, all of those are really going to be what you're looking for when it comes to wanting to aid or increase your arousal. If someone previously had AFib but has normal sinus rhythm and normal BP, are, there, are they able to use cannabis for intimacy? The one thing about cannabis is it's distributed to your body through your bloodstream. And so one, you got to be very careful about any, anything related to the heart and to blood work. You can use cannabis, no question about it. There are a lot of people that use cannabis that have heart conditions or have had heart conditions. But my recommendation is work with your doctor and your medical marijuana doctor to make sure that any medication that you're on, they don't conflict between cannabis and your, your heart medications. When you're looking for really specific medical advice in this way, it's best to consult your physicians and whatever healthcare providers that you've seen, because they're also going to be a lot more familiar with you and with your body and what your norms are than somebody at a dispensary who might not have the same level of medical knowledge. 
But also if you are already using cannabis, it makes me hopeful that you're able to use cannabis for intimacy as well. And again, just working within what is typical for you should help give you that sense of comfort when it comes to the particular sensitivities that you have. Can I get marijuana mailed to me? And the answer is no. The federal government is very specific about this. Unfortunately, our laws in the United States, because it's a Schedule One drug, are very extremely restrictive. It looks like there's a good chance that we'll get cannabis rescheduled to a Schedule Three this year, but it still won't be able to be mailed through the sense of the mail. Now, that being said, you can get deliveries. So if you're working with a medical marijuana dispensary that's in your area, they do deliver. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So most Sotera locations, not all of them, but most of them will have a delivery radius from that particular store. And so they'll be able to deliver it to you, but there are stipulations with that as well. So there's going to be a delivery window, but we still need to ensure that we're we're checking your license and that we're giving the ordered product to the qualified patient that it's intended for. So we still have to check your ID. You still have to be physically present there. Like we, we can't just drop it off and go. It has to be basically how... For instance, let's say you make an online order at your local dispensary and you go into the store to pick it up. It's going to be very similar to that experience just at your doorstep instead of at the dispensary. So we still have to go through all of those regulatory practices of checking your ID, checking your birthday. All of those are are again regulated by the Department of Health. It's just the legality that we're bound to as folks who are able to dispense marijuana. Then ask the question, it says, Are there any strains that enhance female intimacy as also for male? Could that strain be different for both? Jay, this is right up your alley. Yeah. So I think something, again, to really emphasize is that gender is going to be a little bit less of an indicator here. And it's going to be more so about just what our personal experiences are. So you might find a strain between yourself as it seems like whoever's asking this question is a woman, but I'm not sure. But like if you are one particular gender and you want to have a similar experience with a partner who is of a different gender than you, really, again, just going through that same level of experimentation to where you're going to find a strain that works for you and may also work for them, but it also might not. And it's just really going to boil down to your differences with cannabis experience, cannabis preferences, all of that is just can be really different person to person, but also through that level of experimentation, you might be able to find a really good common ground. And I think this goes back to what Maria is asking, which are what strains, I think we came up with and gave you some very specific strains. To start with Soothe, especially with it being that one-to-one ratio, it's really not going to have any really intense psychoactivity. So it can be pretty safe bet when it comes to intro level, especially using cannabis at all, but especially for intimacy. And again, I know I already gave this like little pre-disclaimer before I mentioned it last time. I know I've said it a lot. Using a diary is so helpful for this because it really helps you find the strains that work well for yourself. And Linda asked a really good question. What cannabis products or flower works best? What works best for me and, and my partner? my wife, is uh, edibles and topicals. They work really great for her. Now, I think in your case, uh, Jay, you prefer the flower route. Is that correct? Yeah, flower, topicals. um, And I really have been enjoying edibles more, but edibles for me sometimes can just make me feel really sleepy Mm -hmm. or I, I feel like maybe I haven't done enough experimentation to feel as settled or as comfortable, whereas flower is like, my, my tried and true bestie. Like I, I know what to expect with that, which helps me feel comfortable when it comes to establishing routines for myself that suit my needs or using it during moments of intimacy. Okay, Rose asked a question. What would be a good product to use to relax a person enough, but not give negative thoughts? With Soothe being that balanced CBD to THC ratio, you don't have to worry about that psychoactivity or, or those negative thoughts. Instead, it's going to be that that sensation of relaxation physically without feeling too inundating when it comes to your mental experience with it. Mm-hmm. Got a question from Anonymous that says, um, does Satera have a special limited dark chocolate cherry available for a limited time right now? Um, yes, 
you, they do. I bought some last night and I have to tell you, it's great. Your thoughts on that, Jay? Yes, boy, do we. The dark chocolate cherry is actually a returning flavor for us. Mm -hmm. We had it a really long time ago when I first started and folks loved it. And they asked for it for like a year after we stopped selling it. And mm -hmm. so we're really excited to have it back for a limited time. It's kind of what we're using to, to couple with this webinar um, and to kind of help give you a, a good tasty, romantic product to really ease your way into an intimacy journey using cannabis. And yeah, stop by. All of the Soteras should have it at this point. So anywhere you shop, you should be able to find it as long as, you know, other people don't beat you to it. Another anonymous question is any advice about tolerance breaks? How long, how often does it matter what route you're using? Thanks. It doesn't make any difference on which route of administration. It's absolutely critical if you're using cannabis as part of your, your journey, your routine, is to take a tolerance break. Now, what does that mean? That means that every, in my particular case, what I recommend is every four to six weeks, take at least a day off. Don't use any cannabis for a day. They recommend going four days if possible. What it's doing is, because cannabis addresses the receptors in your body, you have a thing called an endocannabinoid system in your body that it helps your body regulate itself. It uses endocannabinoids that your body produces. Cannabinoids exactly mimic the endocannabinoids, meaning that you're now helping to be able to get your body the resources it needs to be able to address pain, inflammation, um, intimacy, whatever that you're looking for. Now, if you're, you, you're supplementing that to your body, your body may get a little lazy. It will stop producing the endocannabinoids. When you stop using cannabis for a day or two or four days, it causes your body to wake up and say, wait a minute, I'm not getting it from the outside. I got to go back to work and get the work done. It does two things. It helps your body kick back into action. The second thing it does is when you go back to using cannabis, it enhances the effects of cannabis, meaning you take less of it to get the same effect. So you, you, you don't necessarily need to take more and more and more if you have a tolerance break. Now, let me give you a little caution about tolerance breaks. In my case, I have herniated discs in my neck. I have seven of them. I use medical cannabis. It reduces the inflammation and helps me with the pain. I can take about a day to a day and a half off. And about a day and a half, my neck taps my shoulder and says, if you don't do something within the next four hours, you're going to know I'm here. Okay? Because I can wake up in the morning with a level of pain of a seven and eight because of the herniated discs in my neck. Now, by taking a tolerance break, I'm able to use less cannabis and get better effects. A lot of folks have, you know, cannabis as an incorporated part of their routines for a really like in unmanageable conditions otherwise. And so for those folks, tolerance breaks are just not as plausible. And so that's where, you know, instead of taking that four days to like a week, just taking a day can be really helpful in helping your body reset a little bit. Something else that kind of helps break up your tolerance and keeps it at a lower point for a longer amount of time is using different strains, using different routes of administration, using it at different times of the day, using it in different locations. All mm -hmm. of those things can break up um, what your body is used to, which is really where that increased tolerance comes from. So there's a lot of different ways that you can approach a tolerance break to make it a lot more suitable for you and what your body needs. It doesn't have to be like cold turkey, four plus days without any kind of cannabis, because for a lot of people, that's just not possible. So don't be afraid of tolerance breaks. Know that there's a lot of feasible ways in which you can do them um, to where you're still maybe getting the benefit of, of cannabis, but in a different way, using a different route of administration or using it at a different time of day even can be really helpful. Next question says, does it matter in which order the terpenes come in? What's a good overall percentage? I don't think the order of the terpenes makes a lot of difference. I think the amount of the terpene makes the biggest difference. Terpenes are very, very strong, very concentrated. A little goes a long way. It also depends on which type of product, what the terpene percentage is going to be. So mm -hmm. for something like a, a concentrated product, ranging from keef to a rosin, those right. terpene percentages are going to be higher in like the four to six to seven percent. Again, shout out to the research and development team at Certera. We've had uh, a lot of our premium flower strains reaching beyond three percent terpenes, which is like very high, really anything 
past 2% is going to be a really impactful terpene profile. So having those like three to 4% terpene percentage ranges in our flower has been an incredible feat from the, the folks on our grow team. And so it really just depends. I want to encourage everybody to have these conversations with the folks who work in the dispensary because you know, cannabis is still a plant and it's going to vary batch to batch, strain to strain all the time. And so the folks who work at your local Certera have access to what the terpene percentage are, what the particular breakdown of that terpene profile is for mm -hmm. any particular product. So just ask, that is what we're there for. We're there to really help educate you, guide you along on this journey and answer any questions that you might have. I want you to notice over here, there's a product that's a 1CBD to 9THC. It's called Relief. Same thing over here, 1CBD to 9THC. This one's called Dream, and this one's called Relief. What's the difference? Terpene profiles down here, okay? That's why the cultivar is important. What was it designed for? It's not a matter of just buying the strain. It's a matter of buying a strain that's designed for something. But what I love about Cetera is you kind of put it out there that way. I'll use your, your favorite ratio. Here's your Soothe at one-to-one -one right here. Here's another one-to-one -one down here called Revive. Revive gets you a little bit more energized than Soothe. In fact, that helps answer the next question when Anonymous says, what product that helps a man keep an erection longer? I'd head down into the direction of the more sativa-leaning, meaning a Revive rather than a Soothe, to be able to answer that particular question. Yeah, I think, too, that this question can be referred to using the study that we mentioned a while ago with the one to five scale and mm -hmm. uh, you know just being you know hopeful that cannabis can help when it comes to not just achieving but maintaining erections or mm -hmm. having a uh, longer and more pleasurable sexual experiences and then really when it comes to what products in particular you're going to want to be looking at those terpene profiles the revival of the soothe for this one's going to be great because the soothe is going to be more of relaxing it's going to ease muscle tension it's going to like kind of ease your body into that sense of relaxation whereas the revive is going to kind of like stimulate you a little bit more Princess, what about moods there have been friends of mine ordering these D9 products for a specific situation and getting it delivered, hash, flour, other products. I've seen the advertisements for Mood. I've looked at their specs. I would stay away from them. It is not a marijuana product. It is a hemp-based product. Hemp-based, by definition, means has 0.3 THC or less. The reason they can advertise it on TV and they can advertise it on YouTube and they can advertise it in different areas is because it is hemp. It is not cannabis. What that means is it's not going to give you the same effects that you're going to have with medical cannabis. I'm kind of, let's put it this way. If there's ever misleading ad advertising, Moods is doing it, right? They're trying to make you think you're getting cannabis. We have folks who come into the dispensary all the time and ask us about you know, products that they can order online. And really the point that I always emphasize is those products are unregulated. There's no entity that is making them sell what they say that they're selling. Whereas in the medical marijuana industry, everything has to be exactly what we say it is. And so that really just is going to add a level of um, assuredness to making sure that you're getting the products that you're paying for and you're getting the intention and effect out of them that, that you're looking for. Let's go to the next one. It says, not all terpenes are noted on products on the website. Yeah, so I was actually really grateful to have this comment included. The COAs are certificates of analysis, and it's essentially the lab result when we get flower tested. And that's going to break down the terpene percentage and the specific terpene profile that's in any particular product that you're getting. Unfortunately, right now, there's some like addresses and some other information on it that restricts us from offering that directly to our customers. And so that's really why I wanted to emphasize asking the folks at the dispensary, because we have access to that information. We just can't make it available on our website yet. We are working on it. It's been something that we have been 
really working on for a while and are getting really close to being able to have that available to people on the website so that that way they can see it while they're ordering. But even if you can't come into the dispensary, we have a call center that's open for almost the same business hours as our dispensaries, and they have access to all of that information too. So there's a lot of folks who can help guide you and can give you that terpene information that you're looking for, and it will be available on the website soon. Uh, Jay, you get a, you're getting a pat on the back here. It says, not really a question, rather a statement. Everyone should at least try Soothe one-to-one in some form of route of administration, not just for intimacy. Nice call, Jay, and, and I agree. Not just for intimacy, Soothe is a great product. So Christopher says, I recently have been using a lidocaine patch and cream for nerve. Is topical cannabis used in somewhat similar way for nerve pain? The answer is absolutely. Um, I have nerve pain about as bad as it gets, not just for my neck, but being a senior citizen, I have bad knees. I have both knee replacements and I use topical creams all the time. I think lidocaine is great. But I think try, try a, a very good topical product. Uh, Cetera has both a balm as well as a lotion, and they both work very well. I, I like the balm for my particular case, but uh, the answer is yes, it will help quite a bit with nerve pain. Uh, and I think the transdermal of the um, balm will help really get right down into the, into the nerve. Yeah, we've actually had this question asked to us in store before, and one of our coworkers uses lidocaine patches, and they were able to really speak on um, kind of the direct parallels with that routine that they have established for themselves and how they use some of our products at Sertera. And they mentioned both our balm, which is a one-to-one. It's, it's a little bit waxier than like a typical lotion would be be and that is like a staff favorite at the Gainesville location and and pretty much everywhere else it's like our little miracle worker for everybody it really unites us all despite everybody really having different preferences otherwise and so we always recommend that it'll be really great for nerve pain and then we also have transdermal patches and those are really helpful for those instances as well so definitely try using our topical products. And Sertera also has a hassle-free return policy. So if we recommend the balm to you and we think it's really going to work for your nerve pain and you don't get any type of relief from it, we'll give you a credit so that way we can recommend something that might work better instead. Anonymous, that's a great question. What would you mix FSO to use as a lubricant? I think you were talking about coconut oil. Is there anything else you look for? Really anything body safe. You really just kind of want to make sure that it's safe to use with your body. And everybody's bodies are different. So some folks just have a really, really sensitive skin. And so if that is the case for you and you already have products that work well, researching or asking folks at your local dispensary whether or not that would be something that you can infuse FSO with would be really helpful. Sometimes folks use things like beeswax, essential oils to kind of give an added fragrance. So you can really kind of play around with it. But I like coconut oil. I think it's the easiest. And I also think it's the most easily accessible. You you know can buy it pretty much anywhere you buy your groceries. So I think that kind of reduces any kind of barriers to to trying this out. But but there's there's a bunch of things you can use. Just make sure it's body safe. All right, let's go to the next question. Would Sue's work with someone with uh, with high tolerance? Uh, I have naturally high tolerance for some reason. I use Sue's in the middle of the day to help me in the afternoons to be able to get through the day because I'm looking for not just to managing my inflammation and pain. There's a number of other things that I want to take a look at that that that, that, that Soothe is helping with. Yeah, I think it's really helpful to try Soothe still because sometimes folks with high tolerances will just kind of assume that what they need is higher THC, but that's not the case. Really making sure that CBD is coupled with your THC consumption is really helpful. But also if you have a naturally high tolerance, we have a somewhat newer edible product to us that has been like a breakthrough product for folks where like nothing else tends to work. And that's our Wana gummies. Wana is a company based out of Colorado. It's our only third-party partnership 
right now. They've just been doing edible science for a really long time. They have really great work coming out of their labs and they have really robust terpene profiles. Like in all of their edibles, there's 30 plus terpenes in them. And so there's a one-to-one in the Wana gummies as well in a strawberry lemonade flavor. And I think if, if you're, if you're hesitant about Soothe working for you, the strawberry lemonade Wana gummies you should really try and we'll have a, the, the thing with them is they don't typically go on sale very often because they're that third party partnership for us, but the days surrounding Valentine's day, they will be on sale. So that'll be a really great time for you to try that product. And I'm really hopeful that it'll work with you, even with that higher tolerance. Another next question is really interesting question. Aren't, aren't hemp products usually cultivated from seeds and perhaps the stock rather than the flower? due to the percentage of um, hemp versus marijuana. So let me, let me kind of clear the air here. Hemp is one cultivated product. It is a bush by itself. Marijuana is a, another product. Yeah, just like, uh, just like uh, you have uh, roses have different varieties, uh, so does m- cannabis is both hemp and also marijuana. Now, marijuana is very bushy, hence why they call it a weed, okay? It has more than 0.3% THC in it. Anything with 0.3% THC or less is called hemp legally. That's the legal definition here in the United States. But from a botanical standpoint, it's also a botanical product as well that has less than 0.3 THC. There has been hemp products grown with more than 0.3 THC, but it can't be sold on the open market. So these are two different products. They're all grown from seeds, by the way. I've been to hemp dispensaries and growing facilities. I've been to marijuana facilities. They are very much alike from the standpoint of how they make their products. And they're all grown from, they're all grown from, from seeds. And now, when it comes to stalks versus lower leaves, this is where the quality of products. You'll hear about a tier one, tier two, or tier three product. Typically, the tier one products are the leaves that are from the top or product from the top, or the tier threes are down at the bottom that are down there. This doesn't mean that they're good or bad. Um, I prefer tier three products when I'm making, when I'm cooking uh, and I'm making brownies or I'm making different products that are there. So I think, I think we've answered all the questions that are out there. Jay, any final thoughts? I just want to really give some appreciation and love for the folks at Marijuana Aware. Mark, you're lovely. Um, Lee and Leah, you guys are great also. And just really extend some gratefulness to the folks who are, you know, still listening and tuned in. I definitely understand that there are barriers to access when it comes to this information. There's a lot of our personal experiences, cultural factors, social stigma, There's so much that really impacts our ability to be able to seek out and receive this information. And so I think it's really admirable for the folks who are here that they, you know, are doing something that maybe they don't typically do and and listening to me talk for a really long time, which is like (laughs) in and of itself. Um, But yeah, feel free to always ask us questions. Everybody who works at Sotera has a way to contact me. So if you watch this and you want to contact me specifically, my line is always open for that. Just go into your local Sotera, have them reach out to me, and I will be really happy to follow up with any information, clarify anything, or otherwise be as helpful as I can to you. By the way, if you're out there, like and subscribe. We really, we really appreciate it. But I want to thank you very much. And I do want to thank... um, Lee and Leah, if you're in the background, you don't see them on the screen, but they're the people doing the moderations. They do a phenomenal job of helping us put this together. Um, and I do want to thank them very much. Uh, I don't want to underestimate the contribution that they make. And the last person I want to thank very much is Alyssa, Alyssa who came up with the idea of this particular webinar series and uh, really was the emphasis of making this happen. And she should get a good shout out. But Jay, thank you very much. Thanks, Satara, for and, and thank you very much for everybody who's watching. Please check our YouTube channel and join us next, uh, not next week, but the week after we're doing a webinar on terpene.